Next up, we are going to have some fun with some low-level rootkits kind of stuff. Um, now, Alexandre Borges, yes. I'm doing my best here, um, is uh, in all the way from Brazil, and he is a first-time speaker, so we want to give him a special recognition. So let's give him a round of applause. Uh, have a wonderful time. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Alexandre Borges. Uh, I'm a Maori and security researcher at Blackstorm Security. And let's talk about rootkit. Uh, first of all, two things. Uh, English is not my native language, so if you don't understand something, please send me an email. And These professionals deserve my sincere thank you and a deep respect for their researchers about the same time. Let's start. Honestly, I was expecting only 10 or 12 people here. <laughs> This is a table of content. I, I will talk about uh, two topics, ring zero and advanced malware, uh, ring minus two. First, rootkits ring zero. Malicious drivers have been using the same tricks every single day to infect systems, uh, but uh, no doubts. Callback methods or kernel callback functions is a good one because uh, it's a kind of uh, modern rooks used by antivirus programmers for monitoring and alerting the kernel models about uh, a specific event occurrence. Uh, and uh, kernel callback methods are a good trick to evade defenses. Kernel callback methods provide us a notification when a process, a library, and a kernel memory is mapped into memory, when a file system becomes available, when a system is going to down, before a system crash, when a, when a thread starts or ends or finish, when a process starts or finish, when some uh, hash tree entries are modified or r removed. For example, I have uh, seen some hours uh, using this specific uh, callback method, CM hash tree callback, for checking if, if there are persistence entries are kept and just uh, uh, an analyst or uh, software out or a programmer remove it, so the malware is, is able to add it back. It's a nice trick to keep the persistence. To find the number of callback methods is so easy using WinDebug, the first command there. And running a couple of commands, we have uh, very nice way to list the callback methods. For example, uh, PS set creates process notify routine adds a kind of uh, list uh, of callback routines to be called when a process is created or deleted. So in this case, it's so easy to find the number of installed callbacks, the first command at uh, WinDebug, and a very easy intuitive command at the middle to list all the callback methods that uh, are installed. In the last few weeks, I have seen several malwares using this specific callback method, PS set legal notify routine callback methods to register a malicious routine that is called during the thread termination. In this case, uh, the malware changed the 
keythread.lego data uh, to provide a malicious address and the routine redirects the execution flow to the malicious code. It's a very nice and different trick. Here we have the output from the last slide about the about the uh, callback methods associated to create process. And here we have the structure of uh, key thread in the legal data field that is changed by the malware. Windows offers different uh, types of drivers such as uh, legacy drivers, filter drivers, and many filter drivers. All of them are developed by using our WDM or WDF frameworks. Basically, a drive is composed by one or more device objects, and each object is associated to a driver object. So, most Ring Zero malwares, malwares uh, install filter drivers for modify aspects and behavior of e existing drivers, filtering user of operations, add new malicious uh, features, for example, keyloggers. The trick is almost the same. Uh, we have a uh, driver stack, and the malware uh, first create an uh, unnamed device ob object by using this first function, add device. And secondly, the malware adds the unnamed device object on the top of the stack by using this function, IO attached device. All communications in the drive stack is done by using IRP packets. Uh, and each IRP packet is processed by a dispatch routine that's retrieved from the major function table. Uh, the IRP parameters are retrieved from uh, the IO stack location by using this function, IO get, current IP stack location. Additionally, it's possible to pass down the IRP parameters to the next layer by using IO skip current stack location or copy them by using IO copy current IRP stack location. Alternatively, IRP packets can be passed down to the layer drive by using this specific call, IO call driver. Here we have a very nice trick. Some malwares try to pass the IRP package to the lowest driver by passing the middle of drivers, and so avoiding to be detected for by monitoring tools and uh, hooking tools. So it's a very nice uh, and smart trick to evade defenses. Here I show you uh, a complete picture about it. Uh, at the left, we have the driver stack. At the right, we have the associated device objects to each driver. Pay attention that uh, the IO call driver function is called to pass down the IRP package to the next layer. At the bottom, we have computation routines that are called in the reverse order. So uh, the computation routine is the function that, do, uh, the, that does the job. All of them are managed by the IO compete request function at right. Here we have the IRP structure composed by a static part and a dynamic part. The dynamic part is composed by IO stack locations. So each uh, IRP is created by calling the IO allocate 
IRP function. And as I mentioned before, this function and the other three in your head uh, are interesting functions to be analyzed uh, when you uh, reverse your malware. At the right bottom, we have the IO stack location structure composed by the major function. The major function uh, holds the pointers to dispatch routines, uh, parameters field, and completation routines field. Parameter fields uh, depends uh, on the major and minor functions. So, in this slide, we have uh, their uh, its structure uh, of the parameter fields. And in the next slide, we have a complete list of IRP types. So easy. Here we have a complete relationship with, between the uh, IO stack location structure device object structure and driver object structure. It's a good slide to read tomorrow night. <laughs> Here I show you a step-by-step -step investigation about a potential malicious driver named A. Borges uh, with some commands in, in the back. And pay attention, this specific malware use some dispatch routines such as create, read, close, write, and device control. It's uh, so usual to see things like that when you are analyzing malicious drivers. Here, a uh, more complete overview. Uh, showing you uh, the relationship between the reverse code, driver object, and dispatch routines. In this slide, I started an investigation about a potential malicious filter drive by using some commands in the back. Naturally, uh, as close as the at bottom of device stack occurs the infection, the more effective it is. Or, or, I mean, most, uh, most monitoring tools and hooking tools try to check the middle of the stack. So if the infection happens at the bottom, you are skipping all these tools and evading the defenses. Some hours try to intercept requests such as read and write operations uh, by manipulating the merger function array, for example, MG uh, device control and IRP uh, internal control uh, callback mat, uh, dispatch routines. Root kits try to protect itself from being removed by modifying functions such as IRP, MJ, device control, and hooking requests going to the disk. Uh, is other kind of tricks. Uh, some malware try to hook the uh, uh, driver and load routine for preventing the rootkit of being removed, another trick. However, most malicious drivers or most malicious uh, uh, malwares try to avoid touching areas protected by patch guard uh, because patch guard is so tough to circumvent it. Here we have, a, we have a list of protected areas by patch guard. Uh, thanks to Alex Ionesco by this command. Most time, uh, malwares have been storing uh, their payloads and configurations in encrypt hiding file systems. And uh, additionally, they have uh, created random device object names during the boot to associate uh, to the, the special file system. Some malwares composed by executable A drivers have been using APLC, Advanced Local Procedure Call, to perform the communication between the user code 
it in the driver code uh, instead of using IO control commands. Is uh, another smart trick. Some hours uh, don't choose the, uh, any specific driver for injection, uh, but try to randomly uh, pick up a driver by parsing this last structure there. Key, loader, data, table entry. Certainly, uh, hooking the file system access is so easy. Here, I show you a complete list of uh, APIs. It's so easy to do that. Few hours uh, have been hooking this specific API ZW create for intercept all open requests uh, sent to devices. Uh, it's a very uh, it's smart trick because if it's uh, antivirus uh, use the same tricks. Some hours after infecting uh, a system by dropping device uh, by dropping kernel drivers, try to uh, force a reboot uh, by calling ZW raise hard error function. Is a very special error uh, trick. Other hours try to use. Uh, the last routine here in red, uh, you register shut down notification for restoring uh, the malicious drivers in the next reboot. So if you try to remove them, uh, they back. Fortunately, most malwares have been using uh, X allocate pool with tag function to allocate memory pool, but it's so easy to find them because we have the volatility here we can find it by using either pro, as you already know, or execute a command and win the back. Finally, most malicious drivers uh, have been used APC injection to inject uh, some malicious code instead of using create remote thread. So my recommendation is to pay attention uh, at uh, these three last functions in red. Now, I'm talking about advanced malware. Basically, rootkits minus uh, ring minus two. When we talk about uh, ring minus two malwares, the context is so different. Uh, most most malwares uh, act in this level, attack MBR, VBR, UFI, for example. Some malwares alter the BBP BIOS parameter block to change the execution flow to another uh, place. For in this case. This kind of malware alters uh, these less field hiding sectors to change it to uh, another address and uh, execute the malicious code instead of executing the IPL. Here we have a real case uh, about uh, malwares uh, such as TDL4 or Petya, uh, which encrypt. Uh, and infect the MBR. So in this case, the trick is try to load a good MBR and a bad one in the IDA Pro and emulate them uh, using box emulator. So I try to compare to make my, my analysis easier. MBR modifications and VBR modifications uh, are effective ways to bypass KCS, kernel mode code sign policy. KCS is responsible for validating the driver signature. So uh, there are some ways to bypass KCS. Disable it, put Windows in test mode, but in this case, secure boot must be disabled. Change the kernel memory, it's so easy or even trying to find a flaw in the firmware. In this case, again, secure boot must be disabled. 
Here, we have a real case about a Trojan banker uh, where the malware is put in Windows in test mode. In this case, the goal is to uh, force in a near future to load an unsigned malicious driver. Here, I show you a more complete overview composed by BIOS. Here we have the boot process composed by BIOS, MBR, VBR, boot manager. And look at the left down. Uh, there we have the win load easy. Many boot kits try to attack the before load the kernel in Elan protection. Uh, it's a, another smart uh, trick to bypass the fence. Malware have been uh, infecting boot manager. Boot manager is responsible to switch the process execution uh, from real mode to protection mode. So malware have been using some interrupts uh, to access the driver, to patch models, and load malicious drivers. Uh, at the bottom, I show you some, uh, some tasks associated to win load Z. Uh, it uh, enables the protect mode, check the model's integrity and load the Windows kernel, load several DLLs and Elan protection, and finally, load drivers and system registry data. Therefore, integrity checking uh, of in window load uh, is critical, and uh, if it is subverted, everything falls because the integrity control don't, doesn't exist anymore. So, pay attention here. All modern protections are based on digital certificates and digital signatures. So, it's critical. Most advanced root kits, as I mentioned previously, store uh, their payload and um, configuration in an uh, encrypted hide and file system by using uh, some special upcodes. As you know, SM mode is a kind of magical mode or god mode. Uh, that's a perfect place to hide a malware. Here, I show you uh, a first approach composed by SPI Flash, SMM, UEFI services, MBR, VBR, the OS loader, and OS. Uh, pay attention here. Uh, mirrors can attack any block here, so you are not safe. Here is a quick reminder about the UFI phases. So is here uh, I show you a more complete overview about the boot process composed uh, by hardware, and the UFI phases, and things like that. Again. Malware can attack everywhere here, but we have good protection such as boot guard, UFI secure boot, OS secure boot, and, and so on. Remember? The SPI flash is composed by the scripters, Gigabit Ethernet, Manage Engine, ACPI, and BIOS. So, for example, the boot guard controlled by Manage Engine is responsible uh, for validating the boot process uh, by flashing a public key uh, into the Intel Manage Engine. Uh, Obviously, for a perfect working of the boot guard, the SPI flash region must be locked, and the boot guard configuration must be uh, set and protected against SM rootkits. Here, I show you a quick picture uh, about the boot guard blocks. Basically, each block verifies the next one. Uh, it's kind of a certificate chain. 
Another uh, very interesting uh, uh, protection uh, is the BIOS Guard, uh, which runs uh, within the SMM and protects the platform against the non authorized uh, the SPI flash, BIOS update, boot infection, and corruption. And basically, uh, BIOS Guard only uh, allows trusted models to modify the SPI flash memory. Secure Boot is responsible uh, for protecting the entire path against boot uh, kit infection, protects the key components during the kernel load, mm, uh, key drivers and important uh, system files, uh, and at the end, Secure Boot prevents any uh, uh, loading of uh, strange code without a valid si uh, digital signature. Two essential, uh, two essential items in the Secure Boot are the platform key. The platform key establishes a relationship between the platform owner and platform firmware, and is responsible uh, for verifying the key exchange key. And at the bottom, key exchange key establish a, a trust relationship between the platform firmware and OS. Actually, uh, the key exchange key verifies the authorized database, which contains authorized signing certificates and digital uh, signatures, and forbidden database, which contains the forbidden certificates and digital signatures. Obviously, if the platform key is corrupt, everything falls because the secure boot must be or can be disabled. Uh, unfortunately, some vendors uh, store uh, important uh, secure boot settings into F5 variables. However, if some uh, uh, root kit exploits these variables, secure boot can be disabled. UFI BIOS support uh, terse executable format. However, terse executable format doesn't support signatures. And remember uh, what, uh, what I told you, uh, all the modern protections are based on uh, digital signature and digital certificates. So in this case, if a rootkit uh, is able to re replace the typical uh, PL loader by a terse executable, so a uh, secure boot can be disabled. Fortunately, new uh, release of Windows 10 introduced a uh, very interesting feature uh, about uh, SM protections uh, known as Windows SMM Security Mitigation Table. Uh, in Windows 10, the firmware executing SMM must be authorized and trusted by VBS. So it's a uh, is an additional protection for us. SMM protection flags uh, in Windows uh, can be con uh, configured for your use. And uh, here I show you some flags. Finally, I, I'm showing here a practical case, a real case about a customer in Brazil. In this case, the system uh, is not protected against BIOS writing. You see the second one, uh, BIOS read write permission. So it's terrible. In, in the same system, BIOS write enable is set. It's terrible too because uh, any malware uh, can write a malicious code there. The BIOS lock enable is unset. It's terrible too because this is a kind of notification bit. The SMM BIOS write protection is disabled. Horrible again. At bottom, right. The protect range register are disabled too. So in this case, we have a uh, Complete exposed machine, complete exposed system. Here I'm using ChipSec uh, to perform my analysis, my checking. Here 
we have the flash configuration lockdown is enabled. That's okay. However, it doesn't matter because the settings protects the protect range registers which are disabled. So it doesn't matter. Here, the BIOS stop swap mode is disabled. That's okay, because in this case, it's impossible to redirect the resetting vector to a backup boot block. And so it's impossible to execute a malicious code. Finally, the SMM range is enabled. It's a good one. It's a good news. So it's impossible to access the SM run from a non-SM mode. My conclusion are most security professionals are not ready to analyze malicious drivers because the theory is huge and not easy. And I know that. Real customers, real world, are not aware about uh, wing minus two threats, and they know how to, they don't know how to update the firmers. Uh, most customers don't know how to do that. And finally, remember, uh, all modern protections are based on the integrity. For example, digital certificates and signature. However, I leave a question here. What would happen if these algorithms were broken, for example, using quantum computation? Uh, this talk uh, is dedicated to my wife and for you, who reserved some time to be here. Thank you for attending my talk.